Welcome to Physics 2211 Lab 2, Motion of a Falling Object. The first key concept in this lab is Newton's second law, which states that the net force acting on an object is the change in momentum divided by the change in time during an object's motion. This equation can be altered into the velocity update formula, which relates the velocity of an object to the force acting on the object. The velocity update formula is also related to the position update formula. The second key concept is the gravitational force acting on an object. The gravitational force for an object near Earth's surface equals the product of the object's mass and acceleration due to gravity, g, in the negative y direction. This product, mg, also equates to the law of universal gravitation. Manipulating the equation allows us to find the value for g on Earth, 9.8 meters per second squared. Due to air particles, there is also a drag force on objects. This drag force is in the opposite direction of the object's motion. In this lab, the drag force is in the positive y direction and uses the product of a drag coefficient, b, and the square of the magnitude of the object's velocity. The free body diagrams show the forces acting on the object over a change in time. As shown, the drag force increases with time as the magnitude of the velocity of the object increases due to the force of gravity. The system is the ball and everything else is the surroundings. The experiment's goals are to observe the position of an object as it falls and then computationally model the motion with two models. One model will consider the drag force, while the other model will not consider the drag force. Key assumptions include the motion only being on the y-axis. Here is a video of the tracker analysis of the ball's motion. The origin of the axes is at the ball at time t equals zero, and the ball moves in the ne negative y direction. Here are some data from the tracker analysis. Importantly, each frame is 1 60th of a second, the ball travels roughly 0.858 meters, the initial velocity is zero, and the change in time is 0.435 seconds. Here are the initial conditions for the computational model with no drag force, as reflected by b equals zero in the code. These initial conditions are copied from the tracker initial conditions. Newton's second law and the position update formula are expressed as code for both computational models on this slide. The net force for this model is only the force due to gravity. Here's the iteration code for the model with no drag force. The motion of the ball is computed through iterations of roughly 1 60th of a second with a while loop until the time equals 0.435 seconds. The equations mentioned in the previous slide are shown in this iteration step. Here are the initial conditions of the computational model that considers the drag force. Notice that the coefficient of drag, b, equals a non-zero positive number, 0 0.0865. The model that considers the drag force has a net force that is the sum of the force due to gravity on the ball, w, and the drag force, fd. The velocity update formula and position update formula as code are also included. Here's the iteration code for the model with the drag force. The iteration steps are the same as the model with no drag force. Here's the code to draw the arrows representing the force due to gravity and the drag force on the ball. Here are the glow script results for the computational models. The model without the drag force is on the left and the model with the drag force is on the right. Here are the graphical results of the experiment shown as a position versus time graph where the position is measured in meters from the origin and time in seconds. The blue data points are for the experimental model the red data points are for the computational model without the drag force, and the yellow data points are the model with the drag force. The overestimation of the change in position by the computational model without the drag force suggests that there is a force acting against the downward motion of the ball. The model that considers the drag force is a much better model for the motion of the ball and suggests that there is a drag force affecting the ball's motion. Sources of error include differences in measuring the center of the ball and not accounting for motion in other directions, which would impact the ball's position measurements. Rounding errors in calculations and in the code are also considered. There is also a possible error when determining the drag coefficient because it was determined through trial and error. Out of the two computational models, the model that considers the drag force predicts a terminal velocity. When comparing the velocity versus time graphs for both models, the drag force model shows a decrease in the magnitude of the change in velocity, suggesting an asymptote at the negative 3.5 to negative 4.5 meters per second that suggests a terminal velocity there. 
To test the what-if question, one must change the initial velocity for the model that considers the drag force so that the velocity is non-zero in the negative y direction. The results show that the terminal velocity, shown as an approaching asymptote, is reached sooner than when the ball is at rest. However, the ball's terminal velocity is around negative 3.5 to negative 4.5 meters per second, which suggests that the terminal velocity does not change even with a non-zero initial velocity.